I'm Philip Rosedale. Uh, I'm the founder and now the chairman of Second Life. As a kid, I was into tinkering and building things and electronics. And uh, as computers became widely available, I became a programmer. I just couldn't get out of my head the idea that the coolest thing you could possibly do with computers and then with the internet was to create a virtual world. Well, Second Life is kind of like the world's biggest Lego kit in a way. It's a virtual world, a three-dimensional world in which everything is built by the people who come there. So it's a kind of a blank canvas in which you can build anything. The other thing that's fascinating about it as a virtual world is that we go there, that people are present there as avatars, these digital projections of ourselves into that world. The beginning of it was my belief that it would be this amazing kind of visual playground with all this architecture and all these things built by people. And that was true to an even greater extent than I had imagined. But the part that I really hadn't imagined was what it would be like to have people in there. This idea of the avatar, this idea of going into that world as a, a digital person was something that I really didn't understand. And I think that the ultimate success of Second Life and its uh, the tremendous impact it had in the media and kind of in the minds of everyone who even heard about it, much less used it, uh, was greater because of that idea of the avatar. Well, one of the obstacles we had to overcome with Second Life was simply waiting and not spending too much money while we waited. I had been passionate about building a virtual world like Second Life literally since the end of high school, but I didn't believe until 1999 that the technology was in place to enable a business to be built around a virtual world. And so in that time in between, I actually told all my friends, I've got to wait. I cannot do this yet. The technology is not here to make a real business around a virtual world. You know, every really futuristic idea goes through a pretty predictable growth pattern of really pretty linear or gradual growth at the beginning, followed by a sort of a gradual inflection where the product finally becomes nonlinear. Most technology projects, especially the really great futuristic ones, take several years to mature into a form where they can start to make money. And so as an entrepreneur, you've got to be ready to wait several years and you've got to have investors that are willing to wait. And for Second Life, that was very true.